I'm very excited to be here and very excited to be chosen. Even though I knew I was going to get chosen before I came, I um, I prayed oh, about what? it. Wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've been doing Abraham and been having your tapes delivered weekly for a long time. And um, so I've this new way of looking at this range of emotion. And when you say subject, it's my weight. And so I think I've gone through some of the, th this range of emotion and it's stale and I want to fine tune it and rejuvenate it. Well, when you think about this subject, what do you think your emotional set point is relative to, to the subject? Does it feel like power or powerlessness? Oh, I think powerlessness. Does it feel possible or impossible? Possible. Does it feel likely or unlikely? Almost the same word. And we're not questioning what you said. Probably unlikely. So it's possible but unlikely. Right. Does it feel hopeful or doubtful? Hopeful. That's interesting, isn't it? Because it feels possible, but it feels unlikely. But, but it, it feels, feels hopeful. hopeful. In other words, different words make you feel differently around mm -hmm. it. So it feels to you that it's something you're hopeful about, but as you said, you've been hopeful about it. And right. so it's sort of a stale hopeful. So it's more pessimistic hopeful than it is optimistic hopeful. That's right. about where you are, isn't it? Right. So we would not encourage you to get back into anger because that's headed back to Phoenix. Yeah. And yet it's easy to do that. Now, does it feel like hopeful or discouragement? Right now, I think I'm hopeful because I'm sitting in this chair. <laughs> but where do you think you usually feel discouragement? So does it feel like discouragement or anger? Oh, discouragement. So let's start there in that feeling of discouragement. And let's beat the drum of discouragement just a little bit and see if we have identified the set point accurately. So talk to us about this subject. Just ramble as you would to a friend or the sort of self-talk. Talk to us about where you are. You know, um, I feel like I'm not as heavy as I am. I feel like when I go to try on clothes, oh, this is going to fit, and it doesn't. I feel like um, I look pretty good, but then um, I see my arms, and they're too big. I feel discouraged about the fact that I try to lose weight, but it doesn't come off as easy as I'd like it to. Now, we can hear you reaching for positive sounds. In other words, you, you're almost trying to speak both sides of it. So now keep rambling just a little bit. Does she feel discouraged to you? So discouraged is about where you are. Now, does it feel like discouragement to you? Mm -hmm. We really want you to think in terms of the way it feels. I've been this way for a while. I'm not happy with the way I look. I want to look differently. I think about it all the time. I try different things. I make some headway, but then I get tired of it and I get discouraged. It, and, and I put the happy face on it. I put the happy face like the way I've been doing Abraham is to change my way of thinking. I, I'm thinking about, oh, gosh, I'd really like to get something clothes-wise. And I go, okay, don't think about your weight. Go to the beach. And so I go to the beach. Or I go to a positive thought. Well, there, isn't, of, there isn't anything inappropriate because when you think about it, if you have 10 things in your life that are dominantly causing vibrational responses and one of them let's say your weight is a discouraging feeling but the rest of them are positive and you're focused upon the others then your point of attraction is not being negatively impacted as much by this one thing that's bothering you right. but the thing about something to do with your physical body it plays a bigger role in your vibrational output because it comes up so many times during the day. So if you're unhappy about something that keeps coming up, then even though it's only one of 10 factors, let's say, it's a factor that gets a lot more airtime. And right. so when you've got that vibration going on that's activated 
often. Like right. every time somebody looks at you or every time you look in the mirror or every time you put your clothes on, right. if it's something that is activated in your experience many times in a day, mm -hmm. it's really worth figuring out what your set point is and deliberately working to improve it. We call this a more heavy duty right. process. It's a process where you want to get in there and deliberately change the way you vibrate relative right. to a subject. And exactly. we would use it on everything that comes up in this way. Anything that is plaguing you that you can't easily feel better. And we would also say that this process is best used if there is something that feels like it's thinking you. In other words, it's that thing that you wake up thinking about it, you go to bed thinking it. It's in your mind a lot. It's not like something reminds you of it and then you think of it. Or it's not like something that you're deliberately thinking of. It's just something that's in your mind and where it turns up is not a vibration that feels good to you when it turns up. Remember, this is not a journey from weighing more than you want to to weighing less. This right. is not a this is physical, emotional journey. this is an emotional journey. So sometimes when you begin this process, it is really worthwhile to beat the drum of discouragement for just a minute so that you're feeling it. Because as you feel it, you'll be more aware when it shifts. So that's what we were encouraging you to do. Take it a little further here. In other words, talk to us from your place of discouragement. I'm discouraged because I see the health problems that my mother-in-law has. She's 85 and, and she can't get out of bed to go to the bathroom because of her weight. All right, now stop for just I, a minute. Now, does that feel like discouragement or fear? Fear. In other words, so we encourage you to beat the drum of discouragement, but you sort of made a U-turn and headed back to Phoenix. And it's all right because right now we're trying to ascertain where you are, but now it feels more like you're somewhere between fear and discouragement. In other words, you're discouraged about where you are, but you're also fearful about what it could bring. So it's all right, beat those drums, but let's acknowledge that the set point is fear discouragement. Okay. Well, I, I see that and I see I have problems because of my weight. My stomach hurts and I have that and that makes me, all right, this is good enough. So now, now you're wanting to reach for an emotion that feels slightly improved to you. Now you could jump all the way to frustration. You could try that. And we always recommend that you jump as far as you can up the emotional scale, but don't jump so far that you say, oh, this is ridiculous, nothing's happening. So sometimes it's better to just take incremental steps. So we think something that evokes anger might be a good choice right now. So speak about this subject and see if you can induce some life-giving anger. Yeah, You're I, not kidding. Life-giving anger. I'm angry that I think I can tell what people think when they, they see me. Um, like in a bathing suit, or I'm angry that I can't figure right, out so how to get out of here. That's that feeling of powerlessness again. You are so ready to claim your own disempowerment or your own inappropriateness or your own wrong choices. But we got to tell you, it's moving the wrong way on the emotional scale. And so try to find something that gets a little of that power back. Well, I could be angry at my children and at my husband because they remind me that I need to lose weight. And that oh, for it makes it me, it, it makes me really angry because this is my responsibility, not theirs. So get out of my way. It's that, my body. That feels better, doesn't it? Yeah, it feels a lot better. Interesting, isn't it? In other yeah. words, mind your own business. Yeah, mind Pay attention to what you put in your mouth and leave what I put in my, my mouth alone. alone. That does feel better, doesn't yeah. it? Who do they think they are? Right. Keep and going. also the fact that um, if I put something in my mouth that's not right, I get a look or I feel that way. I feel like, leave me alone. You know, you're really on to something here because this is a situation and there are so many like it where you're not where you want to be. And then the actions that you offer just bring more recognition to where you don't want to be. So it's like you can't get out of it. It's like, this is what's expected of me. This is the way people see me. Our society is yes. that way. There yeah. are all kinds of hidden things in food. It's difficult to see what you're really eating. I'm too busy. There are so many demands that are made on me that I don't really have time to prepare food in the way that I would like to. Now, it sounds like scapegoating, but 
They don't know. Nobody knows but you. In other words, this is an emotional journey where you are trying to soothe the resistance within you that is the only thing that is keeping you from what you are wanting. As you begin to practice the thoughts that feel better, the cells of your body begin to respond just like everything in the culture begins to respond to the newfound vibration that you're practicing. So now let's not jump too far there. The way it works is you change the way you feel. And the first step is to stop beating up on yourself. And we have found that if you will turn your attention to something else and take it off yourself, it is a softer vibration. So as you blame society, that feels better than blaming your husband. Right. In other words, right. the more general right. you get in yeah. your blame, then the lighter the blame is and the less resistance there is. So... Let's continue this emotional journey. Start with that frustration and then see if you can reach for something lighter still, like hopefulness. We're not saying that you can necessarily make this jump all at once. You might spend a week mad at your husband. Uh -huh. You might spend the next week just feeling angry at food manufacturers in general. But after you've practiced that for a while, you're going to be less likely to dip back into that self-blame. And that's the thing that, especially in the beginning, you're wanting to avoid. You're wanting to get to the place where you're saying things to yourself such as, I really like my body for all kinds of different ways. I appreciate how stable it is. And I appreciate how healthy it is. I appreciate how clear thinking this body is. I appreciate how my skin feels and looks. I appreciate the elasticity of my skin. I love my great hair. I feel good about my body. I like waking up. I'm appreciative that I don't have pain. In other words, sometimes you can even change the subject of your body enough that you can jump right into feelings of appreciation. The thing that we most want you to hear, and it's whether it's the subject of health, whether it's the subject of body weight, whether it's the subject of just abundance in general. The attitude that lets good things happen to you is an attitude of self-love. It's an attitude of appreciating self. And sometimes the bridge to self-love is sort of defending yourself a little bit. But the problem with defense or justification is it's beating the drum of something that doesn't allow the energy in. And so as you are reaching for the thoughts that feel better and you are blaming and finding a little relief, eventually you're going to have to let go of that blame too. But blame is a bridge to self-love. It is. It's easier to turn this blameful attention from yourself and put it somewhere else, you see. Watch the children if you're wanting to know what's natural and innate on this emotional journey. What's the first thing they do when you catch them doing something that you think is wrong? What's the first thing they do? They blame somebody else. In other words, they will not let you easily or quickly diminish their self-value and then oh but that's so inappropriate you have to take responsibility for how awful you are parents and society say in other words you train yourself into depriving yourself of self-belief and so it isn't surprising that you grow up not willing to take that strong stance that does re-empower you because so many others who have been not wanting you to be selfish because they were wanting you to do what made them feel better sort of train that natural self-surviving mechanism out of you. But they don't know. In other words, you sort of got to get to that place where you say, I don't care what you think. I am who I am and I'm starting to really like me. And I will find the clothing that looks good and I'm proud to be the being that I am. And I'm not going to start measuring myself or continue to measure myself by how much I weigh. People are self-conscious because most of you see yourself through the eyes of others, first and foremost. And that's why you're easily, most of you, reaching for what they think. In other words, what's the outside rule that I should conform to so that I can get approval from you? And what we're wanting you to hear is that the only approval that ever mattered was the meshing up with the source that is you. And you can feel when you do that. you got to somehow talk yourself into feeling good about being where you are. And in the moment that you start feeling good about where you are, now good things come to you. And think about someone offers you a compliment and you shirk it off. You think they're flattering you inappropriately. You're not ready to let them behold you as beautiful because you don't feel beautiful. And you've got to. you got to start feeling good where you are. And when you feel good where you are, you can get to anywhere you want to go. When you feel bad where you are, you can't move off that spot.